Honourable Member for uh, Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Madam Chair, and it's uh, my privilege to stand and speak to this take note debate. Um, I want, first of all, uh, to uh, speak to the Edmonton uh, Ukrainian Canadian community and how stalwart uh, the Ukrainian Canadian community across this country has been in standing up for and giving support to their families overseas. It is absolutely incredible, and they, of course, keep their support on us and getting us to speak out. I particularly want to mention Daria Luchu, who is the former past president of the Edmonton UCC, who has been incredible in reaching out to me and, and telling me the views of the Edmonton UCC. Um, absolutely important that everybody in this place and across Canada take the time and uh, the opportunity that available through the Ukrainian Canadian community to inform us about the historic um, uh, travesties that have gone on in Ukraine. Um, I've had the privilege of participating in the Holodomor um, commemorations each year. There's a Holodomor traveling expedition, e exposition, but there is also the Bitter Harvest film, which I encourage people to go out and to see, which is in the theaters, talking about uh, the crisis that Ukraine suffered in the past and continue to suffer. But third, uh, Madam Chair, there is a new play that has been produced in Alberta with the support of the St. John's Institute called Blood of Our Soil. It's the most powerful presentation that I have seen of the long history of travesties that the people of Ukraine have suffered from the time of Stalin through to Hitler, now under Putin. And uh, I hope that that play will come to Ottawa. Um, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs has advised, uh, Ukrainians were early settlers to our prairies, and many of them descended at the train in Edmonton, from the train in Edmonton Strathcona, came on to be uh, uh, tollers of the soil, and now have places in all the governments of our country. So to their credit. Um, it's important, as a number of the speakers here have said, that it's important for us all to stand up for Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty, and to speak out in support of Ukraine. Um, we support, of course, my colleagues and I support the UNIFOR continuing. Um, many were waiting for this decision to be made, and finally it has been made. My guess is that two years probably won't be enough, um, unless Mr. Putin backs off and takes away the support of what is going on in, in eastern Ukraine. Um, we, of course, celebrate and honour the commitment of Canadian troops, some of whom include the Princess Patricia from Edmonton. Very proud that they've gone overseas again to share their skills and professionalism to the Ukrainian troops, many of whom are completely untrained. Um, I know that I've met many of the young men and women who actually uh, head off to the eastern edge of Ukraine with absolutely no training, putting them, their own lives at risk. Um, but as has been mentioned in the House, it is equally important not only that we give this direct assistance to build uh, the armories and, and the troops of Ukraine, that we give increased support to the development of a democracy and re restoration of the rule of law, of law in the country. I spent a good deal of time over the four or five times that I visited in meeting with human rights advocates, in meeting with independent media who are struggling to be a voice for ordinary Canadians, and with the governments in the local area who need our assistance in teaching them how they can work effectively with civil society. There are many young Ukrainians who are desperate to work hand in glove with the Ukrainian government in teaching them how to be more democratic. And it is absolutely critical that we build that democracy if they have any hope of getting the confidence of the people in eastern Ukraine, that they can have confidence in their government that they will also represent them. But, uh, Madam Chair, I also want to mention a number of specific actions that could be taken. Uh, disappointingly, uh, the previous Conservative government um, gave short shrift to the imposition of sanctions and my colleagues in this place have continued to push that we need to extend the sanctions so that they are on par with the sanctions imposed by the U.S. and the EU, particularly to Igor Sechin and to Vladimir Yakunin, and to get rid of the various existing uh, loopholes that allow Canadians to work with um, these, these discreditable entities in uh, Russia that are f helping to foment and support this war. Um, Again, I just wish to, to add that we want to give thanks to the troops that are there and uh, to let the people of Ukraine know that we are here for the support and we will hold this government accountable for delivering on the many promises that they're making. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? The, the, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs.
Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and, uh, and let me also thank the member opposite for uh, her words this evening. I too, and this whole government shares its thanks for the uh, for the great work of the Canadian Armed Forces. Many of the women and men who will uh, who will join uh, Operation Unifier will at one time have passed through 5th Canadian Division Support Base Gagetown in the riding I have the honour to represent, uh, and they will do important work on helping. Ukraine maintain its sovereignty, stability, and security in, in this uh, current situation. Uh, but Operation Unifier is one part of a whole-of-government approach to demonstrate our steadfast support for our friend and ally, Ukraine. And I'll, I'll ask the Honourable Member opposite if she would agree that this whole-of-government support that includes uh, non-lethal military equipment uh, support, uh, support uh, for humanitarian assistance for those affected in the conflict, uh, support for a range of initiatives to address immediate stabilization and security measures, uh, bilateral development assistance that does focus on democracy, human rights, the rule of law, and support for civil society, as well as support for economic growth, including the signing of the free trade agreement with Ukraine, uh, is the right direction for this government to demonstrate its support once again for our good friend and ally, Ukraine. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you, I would like to respond to the Honourable Member. Let me give a few specifics, Madam Chair. Um, let's go beyond the rhetoric that, okay, we will we'll give a whole of government support. Let me give a few examples. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the Government of the Day stepped up and said, we are going to put the funds in to return Ukrainian interns to this country? That would be one specific thing that could be done that our Friendship Association would really appreciate. I cannot under, I can't understate the value of that exercise. I had up to six interns that came to work with me in my office. They have all gone back and they are contributing, working hand in glove with the government. Secondly, we need to give support to the independent media. We need to do a lot more support through CETA to civil society. It is civil society of Ukraine who are the ones who are going to create a more democratic government and are going to hold them accountable to be both supporting their own troops and to be building the society that Ukrainians want to have. So those are two of the specific recommendations that I would make in that regard. Then comments, questions et commentaires, the honor for Sandwich Gulf Islands. And speaker, and I, I really applaud the remarks from my friend from Edmonton Strathcona. The focus on media, the focus on civil society, it's the people of Ukraine who are crying out for help, humanitarian aid, and really, in the circumstances that we face right now, I think that that focus is one which, in addition to the trade that the minister spoke of, the economic stability will help. Uh, training uh, Ukrainian soldiers is, from my point of view, the riskier part of the equation. But supporting civil society is something that we should unquestionably be redoubling. For Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and through you, I'd like to thank uh, my colleague for her question. Um, one of the things that the Government of Canada could do, I think, is to support the interaction and the trade between farmers and small business in Canada with farmers and small business in Ukraine. We always talk about the backbone of the Canadian economy is small business, and yet what are we doing to support and foment that kind of trade? When I traveled in Ukraine and I talked to local governments and to civil society and small business, um, that is the kind of support that they're looking for. Are we simply going to support the oligarchs and get Canadian or American companies matched up with the oligarchs to uh, exploit gas? Or are we actually going to do something different and, and lend direct support to small business and Ukrainian Canadian communities here to build that in Ukraine? And for a brief question, questions et commentaires, the Honourable Member for Esquimalt San Souk. Chair, and I'd, I'd like to ask the Honourable Member whether she shares my concern that in this climate of cuts to international aid budgets around the world, that uh, I, hopefully Canada will not participate in this week, but with the increasing humanitarian needs in Ukraine, that they will be forgotten uh, in the rush to serve some of the places which get more attention in the media. Brief answer from the member from Edmonton Strathcona. Briefly, Madam Chair, I'd like to thank my colleague for raising that. A number of people have talked about the number of refugees. Um, not only do we need to get humanitarian aid to the people in the Donbass region and into the Crimea, we need to be supporting those people who are basically become refugees in their own country. And uh, we know that we have a crisis across the border. We know that there's an announcement of the new American government saying that they're going to severely cut foreign aid. We need to be taking a close look at our foreign aid budget. I'm hoping in the coming budget this week 
that we in fact see substantial increases because we've got a crisis going on in Africa, but we also have a crisis going on in Ukraine. They are family members of many Canadians and we need to be making sure that we're reaching out to support them.